It is estimated that there are over 40 million people currently trapped in slavery today, over 20 million of whom are subject to unpaid forced labour. Mining, fishing, agriculture and making our clothes. My name is Kat, welcome to episode 6 of the Slow Living Guide where I give you the A to Z on slow living and hopefully provide a pocket of calm in your day. In episode 5 we chatted about slow beauty so if that's of interest to you do make sure to go and check out the link at the end of the video. Also, if you're on a journey to slow down and want to learn how to use your time more effectively and live a more sustainable lifestyle, then I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and you will not miss future episodes. Before we get into slow fashion, I just want to do a quick 101 on fast fashion. Fast fashion is essentially the unethical overproduction of cheap clothing usually sold in high street stores. A summary of why it's so unethical is that if it's incredibly cheap, then chances are that something has been missed out in the production process to cut costs. This might be the use of low quality materials, unsafe factory conditions or labourers not being paid fair wages. Back when I lived in Central Asia as a kid, something really weird used to happen every autumn. Everyone seemed to disappear. As a kid I didn't really understand it, but I now know that my teachers and classmates were going to the cotton fields to work gruelling hours unpaid to meet the high demand for cotton production. If these teachers, civil servants, firefighters and even doctors didn't comply with the government's demands, then their institutions would be closed, they would face heavy fines and they may even lose their jobs. On top of this, the excessive use of irrigation to water the cotton crops has resulted in the shrinking of the Aral Sea, which in turn has destroyed the fishing industry that sustained the livelihoods of many in the region. This is just one story amongst thousands of the suffering that has been caused by overconsumption and the fast fashion industry. Before I go any further, I just want to stress that I'm not sharing any of this from a place of judgement. I personally still have so much to learn about sustainable fashion and I'm on a journey of my own. Slow fashion is also a very complex issue that this video will probably not do full justice to, so if you feel like I've missed or misconstrued anything, do let me know in the comments below and we can all get a bit more educated about this. The bottom line though is that these stories do need to be shared, even if they make us feel uncomfortable, because it's only in being aware of the issues that we can start to make a change for the better. In slow fashion circles, the advice often given for shopping more sustainably is to buy quality over quantity and to invest in more sustainable fashion that will last you longer. While I agree with this in theory and think that if you can afford to, this is a really great way to go, I do think that it doesn't always work for everyone. For example, if you are a student, on a minimum wage job, a single parent, the list goes on. But there is a way forward. Here are some of my low cost, slow fashion ideas. The first idea to move towards a slow fashion lifestyle is simply to cut down on the amount you're shopping at high street stores and try to make what you buy last for longer. One way of doing this is to wash your clothes less often so that they don't wear out so fast, or to try and mend damaged clothes rather than replacing them immediately. Buying second-hand items from charity shops is one of my favourite ways to shop more ethically and sustainably. It takes a little more time and creativity to be sure, but is generally less expensive and results in a much more unique curated wardrobe than if you just bought everything that was in fashion. A little tip is to go to charity shops or thrift stores in wealthier neighbourhoods, as they tend to have more high quality, less worn items. There's nothing like custom made clothing that fits just right. It may be an idea to have some items custom made or take second hand items and upcycle them. This is also a really great way to engage in your more creative side. A super easy way to sustainably spice up your wardrobe at no cost is to have a swap party. This consists of doing a closet clear out at the same time as other family members or friends, then picking some new items from each other's donate piles. 
I think probably about a third of my wardrobe has been curated this way, and what I love about it is that these items all have stories and are associated with particular people and places in my life. There are of course some items that you might not fancy getting second hand, such as underwear and sports clothes, so in this case, if possible, I would recommend saving up to buy more high quality ethical items, especially as they'll last you longer and probably be more comfortable. However, if you really can't afford to do this, don't sweat it. Just do what you can with the resources you've got. If you're the kind of person who likes to wear something new and different to every event, then this is the one for you. Renting your clothes is a really great way to reduce overconsumption of clothing items for one-time events such as weddings or proms. I've not personally rented clothes, but it's definitely something that I'd consider for the future. In a nutshell, slow fashion is about consuming in a more sustainable and ethical way. Some ways you can do this are through buying second hand, upcycling old clothes, having swap parties. I can't remember the rest, but you can flick back through the video and remind yourself. If you have any other ideas, let us know in the comments down below. If you learned something new, do be sure to like the video and share it with a friend who you think might benefit from the message. Also, if you're interested in finding out more about modern day slavery and joining in with the mission to end it, then you can check out the organisation International Justice Mission, which I will leave a link to in the comments down below. International Justice Mission is a charity that works with local authorities, investigators and lawyers to carry out rescue missions, provide rehabilitation support to victims and bring criminals to justice. I personally know people who work with International Justice Mission so can vouch for the legitimacy of the work that they do and definitely recommend that you go check them out. Also, next episode we will be chatting about how to cultivate a slow home so do be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that. Until next time, it was lovely to have you here.